Okay, so why is it important to ask the right questions in your workplace? Sometimes you can ask a question that is like off topic. Sometimes you ask the right questions and it's always key to know how to ask the right questions. So it's really important for us to learn how to ask the right questions in our workplace because it helps to drive discovery and innovation. That means if you're all brainstorming about a project and some things are a bit unclear, it's important for you to ask the right questions for you to understand what exactly you're trying to solve. So for example, the technical challenges that you get, um, sometimes not everything is always clear the first time and you have to know sometimes okay sometimes it can be unclear and you have to know how to ask the right question so that you get the right answer and with that you either get to as a natural human you get to maybe improve also on your um innovation because the more you're curious the more you also like giving out your ideas to the project and the team and that's going to help like drive and discover um more innovation in a certain project it also helps to understand uh deeper projects it also helps with deeper understanding of projects and ideas sorry and um this is yeah like just like the example i said before um during the technical challenges if you don't ask the right questions then you're probably not going to understand the the technical exercise as well and when you ask the right questions it also if everyone participates it kind of helps to improve that collaboration between different people in the team because you get to see the different ideas or thinkings from different guys and the right questions can lead to breakthroughs of ideas. So there are different types of questions normally. So an open-ended question is a question that, it's a question, but it doesn't necessarily require a yes or no answer. So um, for example, what time are you going to school today? That's something that you're just trying to explore a different thought or an idea. A close-ended question can be something like, did you finish your homework? That requires a yes or no answer. And then we also have probing, which kind of digs deeper into the details of a uh, setting. It's more like being inquisitive and trying to think more about, trying to get more details about a certain project. And then the last one is like clarifying. So that means you're trying to seek an understanding and also remove the ambiguity. If something was not clear, you're trying to ask questions to ensure that you clarify and understand um, and understand the project well. That means you're removing all uncertainties in a question. So curiosity is a very prominent skill to have in your workplace. Um, I think, yeah, so there's this, there's this article here. Let me share this tab. Can you see the other tab? So um, this, this is linked on the document, but it's, uh, it's, it's a, yeah, so it's a post from Harvard Business Review and it talks about why curious people are destined for the C-suite. So this is linked and you can just have, you can just read through it. Um, but just the main pointers here, you can see that there was a survey by PwC. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of PwC, it's like a our consultancy. So more than a thousand CEOs whom cited curiosity and open-mindedness as a leadership trait that is becoming um, increasingly critical in challenging times. So 
The other one also is business leaders who are always expanding their perspective and to know what they have. And they have like that natural curiosity are people who are going to be successful. Um, so we have that document so you can just read through it. But yeah, so curiosity is a very important aspect. It, it shows how you're interested in a certain project. And if you're in a team, a manager always expects you to be there 100%. That means you're there mentally, physically, emotionally. And how would they know that you're like 100% there? It's how curious are you to ask questions to, how curious are you to learn more about this project? How curious are you to like add more insights on this project that we're trying to solve? And in as much as curiosity is like one of the biggest traits that a leader should have in our place, or mostly people in management, it's not all the leaders. Sometimes you don't need to have um, all the answers. So even if you look at the president and big head of state or even big company CEOs, they normally don't have all the answers to all the questions or all the problems. They don't have all the solutions to everything, but they do need to be curious enough to understand what is going on, like what kind of impact will this lead? What kind of impact will certain certain things have on different things? So curiosity is really that something that it's it's there in all of us, but sometimes it's also influenced by our by how it's influenced by how interested we are in something. So another another very influential person. I'm sure you all know Einstein. He's like one of the greatest influential scientists and he uh, solved so many uh, riddles in the world. And he, this were his famous words. It's, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. That means um, he's only fueled by curiosity. It doesn't require any special talent or anything for you to solve something. It's if you're really naturally curious about a certain topic or a certain thing, then by nature, you're just going to try and solve um, that thing or read more about that thing. Um, and the other thing, the other famous words that you say was the important thing is to not stop questioning. Um, curiosity has its own reason for existence. Um, so I know uh, we always uh, have different, we're always curious about different topics and it can vary from different people. And sometimes when you suggested, when someone suggests a different topic, it's sometimes hard for you to like get more curious simply because we don't have interest. But if we're in a workplace, it's you're there because you are first of all interested in that project, your skills match that project, you have the ability to improve and also work on that project well. So by nature, you're required to be naturally curious about the projects that you do, how you're going to do them, if there are either ways or possibilities to solve a certain problem, etc. Um, so generally in our place, if you're going to be a leader somewhere, if maybe you're leading a team or anything, curiosity is something that should inspire you to continuously seek out fresh ideas. So what happens when you're a leader and you don't, you just follow the same old rules, you're not curious about changing anything? Um, your company would basically not flourish if you're not trying to like seek out new ideas and approaches to keep up with the competition. Um, the other thing for curiosity, why it's necessary in our place is it inspires creative thinking. So um, uh, when we talk about creative thinking, it's just, uh, it's creative thinking is also a very key 
skill to have when we're in your case, because as I said, you're always work, going to work on projects or you're always trying to solve a problem. And for you to try and solve that, you have to think creatively on which is the best method that I can approach this problem. And that is highly fueled by curiosity. We also have, I don't know if you guys are like fans of Disney and other, other, yeah, like Pixar animations, but whilst Disney attributes his success of basically Disney in innovation to curiosity. So I have linked that document. Please go through it and see how and why it's important for you to cultivate that natural curiosity in you because it's really going to help you not only at an academy but also when you when you're in a workplace setting um so the question is if sometimes you feel like you already everyone already has that natural curiosity but sometimes it doesn't come out strong and there's a way you can train your mind to be naturally curious. So the first thing on what you can do to develop your curiosity is to think like a child. So I don't know if you guys remember when you were kids, it was very easy. When you don't understand anything, you'd always just ask your parents certain things. And uh, that's basically, kids are naturally curious but as we grow old kind of the society and the people around us sometimes make it hard for us to like express ourselves or our thoughts um openly so maybe you try to ask something and then you feel like someone will judge you for not knowing or sometimes uh maybe in the traditional educational settings you will find that um, if you try to ask a question, um, sometimes it may not be uh, appreciated well. And as a kid, you never really care about what other people would think when you ask certain questions. So that's one, one thing to um, think about when you're trying to develop your curiosity is to have that childlike um, mind. So just be open and look for novel ideas and ways of doing things. And then another thing is to be very observant and also listen very keenly. So try and in as much as your head might try to pull you somewhere else, try to put your focus in something and be very keen and observant and listen and then after your mind generally just having applied that childlike imagination and like oh, i don't know how this works so how does this work where does it go like without being afraid of other judgments from other people um so yeah try and ask questions and then another tip to develop your curiosity is to like um try something new so for example take a different route to work or travel or just do things that you're not used to doing on your daily basis and with that you can you, you'll have a lot of aha moments so you'll just be like ah so you'll start to notice a lot of different things and with that it's like training your mind to just um, be curious about new things and other things so for example when you're walking we always walk mindlessly but sometimes if we walk you're like okay i'm walking on a pavement how was this built what got what was the process behind all this how many how much material got into it so that inquisitive nature and just trying to question things will like train your mind to be a naturally curious person So um, asking the right questions is very, it goes very hand in hand with developing curiosity. So 
once you develop curiosity, you'll have so many questions in your mind. But how do you like craft the right question to ask? How do you phrase the right questions well with the right motives? So the first thing is to be very clear and concise about what you're asking. Make sure that there are no ambiguities in whatever you're trying to relay, the information you're trying to relay. So be very specific on a certain topic that you're trying to ask. Um, and also use the appropriate language at tone and then contextualize the question to align with your goals. So for example, asking the why, always asking the why behind things. So, okay, we've been told to use AWS. Why? Um, because it helps to, uh, because it helps to like improve uh, your processing power and also like keep asking why every time just ask yourself why every time something happens so you read the first statement on a technical challenge ask yourself why and it's going to like let or train your mind to think beyond um, just answering questions and then after you ask why you can also ask like what if we used um, instead of Amazon. And in that, you're developing that curiosity, or you might, when you develop that curiosity, it like takes you to go, you can either be answered by someone, or you can go online and maybe um, research about it. And then with that, you get to learn new things and understand why AWS over GCP, GC, and then also ask yourselves on the how so like how how is this made how is this going to help me like the practical steps and just the basic implementation so yeah um i wish i had a i wish i had one of your technical um challenges so we can really go through it and see like how to how to like develop curiosity besides just answering the questions that are on the challenge. So there are the questions also made by humans. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Yababa always asks if you have any question, like just feel free to mention it out. And what he does is he always wants to see your perspective. So they might not always be right. But you can also suggest something that can maybe help improve them and also help improve the project. So the more the, the different ideas, the more uh, you're going to improve the collaboration and effectiveness of the project. Um, so there's also this book. I've linked it. There's a link here if you if you can get a chance to just, if you're one of the readers, you can maybe read it uh, during a certain, your, your free time. But it's uh, it's a book that was made for both personal and work life and also business. And it's all about um, how do you communicate better to like craft more beautiful questions and also because um, when you when you ask the right questions you're going to ask to get the right answers and also you're going to um solve your problems much better so just a small review um it's it seems that asking more questions can help us solve problems easily the other thing is curiosity drives breakthrough ideas and there are three fundamental questions that you need to ask yourself in every situation or like every time. So like the why, what if something was done different, or how how is this thing done? The other thing that it emphasizes is having that childlike curiosity without the fear of being judged by someone else, because we're all humans. And uh, what really matters is you, and how you're going to like um, help improve that project. So in as much as you don't really understand what's going on and you feel like others are ahead of you, don't be afraid to ask the questions because others are also going to learn from you. Others will also like 
trying to avoid to ask that question because they also feel like they will feel like they're left behind. And just having that childlike curiosity without being afraid of people judging you, just asking what you need to ask, it's going to really help you like go ahead and move faster. So he also says that beautiful questions are ambitious yet actionable. So they lead to progress and creative solutions in both business and in personal life. And he also challenges the education systems, the current education systems, to advocate for more questioning outside the box. So I know that sometimes there are some rules in school that in schools that have been put um, to guide people. And he challenges that um, system for students to be allowed to think outside the box, outside the rules that have been made, and just go ahead and ask um more questions as to why so why did you implement such and such a rule why did you do this instead of that sometimes it also helps to bring that cohesion between for you to really understand why are these people doing this instead of doing that it's also um good for you to ask so um we're going to just talk about three scenarios and I want you guys to like participate. You can either text on chat or uh, maybe um, I would love it if you unmute and speak. Um, be curious, be inquisitive and um, have the childlike curiosity and without just without feeling like you're being judged, just ask your questions. So the first scenario is if you're new to the company and then you're being introduced to your team and the projects that you will ask you will work on so the type of question that we're going to ask is an open-minded question so that means it doesn't need an answer that's yes or no so uh just i, I want you guys to like craft a certain question regarding this scenario and just show um, your engagement and willingness to learn more about either your team and the projects that you ask on. So, and this uh, this is just um, a scenario. Uh, so, if you're new, if you're being introduced to the company, and you will be required in your when you have your first meeting with the team about the projects that you have. What are some of the one-on-one -on -one questions that you're going to ask your manager? So if you're also in an interview for a job and you, instead of just answering all the questions they're giving, it's also good to challenge them, to ask them questions about their company, just to show how curious you, you are about their project and how you're going to, it just shows your interest in the project and in the company as well. So um, you're always advised to like think about these questions before you get into the meetings or your interviews. Um, so what are some of the questions that you would ask um, your team or the, pro or the project? There's just some things that you should naturally be curious about. It could be, can you explain the current project and what are the different, what, what other roles do team members play in that project? And how am I going to, how is my role going to contribute to that team? Um, anyone else has any example on such a question? How would you, what are some of the questions that you'd ask when you're first in an interview? Tremulous, can you unmute and maybe just think about a question that you'd ask to show your interest in the company? Okay, hi, uh, Margaret, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, maybe some, some of the question I can ask is about uh, the goal, the goal of the project. Uh, why, 
it should uh, do the, the the project in the first place and who it will be benefited from from it mm -hmm. also how the company will benefit from this uh, project that's the mm -hmm. question this question i want to ask and yeah. then uh, the for the for the technical part i want mm -hmm. to ask what uh, methodology uh, since i am new uh, to the company i want mm -hmm. to and what uh, methodology the team uh, is using to implement uh, the project uh, mm -hmm. so that I can understand uh, how I can ad ad adapt myself uh, to that um, methodology. Yeah, uh, those are really good questions. Uh, yeah. I think just by asking those questions, you're already showing the interest in the company that you're you're ready and willing to work and we just want to understand how their company does and how you're going to like help them achieve their goals that's a really great um those are really great questions and i would advise you to also think about that the next time you find yourself in an interview or something and then, so we have a second scenario. Um, either junior reps or I can take this. So imagine you're just having a coffee with a colleague from a different department or um, someone you look up to in the company. So it could be, um, you could be a junior data engineer and the uh, he's the senior data engineer and you're having a coffee chat with him to discuss about just to learn more about the company and also about the other parts of the business so try to think about it's an informal meeting first of all because you're having coffee the second thing is you need to show a genuine interest and show that you're respectful and the other thing is your question should be an open-minded, so not a yes or no answer. So an example is, can you share like insights about your project, your project department that it's currently working on? Like maybe they chose to use this data pipeline and they noticed this is how it works as compared to the other data pipelines. What are some of the other things that if you met a senior person in your management, it Maybe in your work, what kind of questions would you ask him? Just to show, like, you're really interested to get to where he is in the company, and just to show you're interested. I'm interested in learning more about the company and what it does. And yeah, just try and draft any two questions. Yeah, I'm sure, Junior. Can anyone take this? If you're typing, just give me a thumbs up. Junior, can you hear me? Probably not, Yabtra, can you hear me? Okay, so I assume you're typing. Um, while he's typing, okay, yeah, while he's typing, um, so we'll just go back to you, Shemelis. What kind of questions would you ask uh, senior management in a company? Just to learn more about uh, the business, but it, it should just come out of mind. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe I can ask him some, uh, you know, productivity uh, tips. Uh, that because since he stayed more, uh, more, more time in the company than me, mm -hmm. uh, and I can ask him some productivity tips uh he followed mm -hmm. uh i again uh, uh maybe i i also want to ask him about uh his uh his future uh plans yes you know uh, uh 
career career future plans. I I I think uh, these are the one that I have in mind now. Okay. Um, you could also ask things like what he has learned over the years and that journey, if he could give you tips on succeeding to, through that um, through that path up to where he is, just um, yeah, things like that. So while we wait for Junior to type, uh, I can just go on to the next question. So finish this session quickly. Okay, so the last, the third project is, imagine now you're not like a, a junior, you're now leading a project. And when you're leading a project, it means you have teams working under you, they're reporting to you every single day, and you have to give them tasks to do, you have to guide them, through the tasks they're doing. You have to um, implement the tools they're going to use to do a certain project. Um, so when normally when you're in a management position, you have to be a strategic thinker. So thinking how to um, solve problems very strategically. So the first thing you need to understand is your objectives and also gauge the stakeholders we also need to understand, um, so I'm building a project for who for maybe a bank and building a credit scoring, um, let's, say, let's say you're building a credit scoring platform for a bank and you need to understand the bank's expectation and you also need to understand the objectives which is to um, create a credit scoring platform. And the other thing is you need to make sure that your team understands what tools they're going to use, what language they're going to code in, um, the roles of each member of the team. So when you're having your initial project meetings with your team, what kind of questions would you ask your team? And when, when you're thinking about this, think about it in a 360 degree way. So you can ask your team what they think about certain, um, certain uh, programs that you've chosen to use, certain software that you've chosen to use. And they can also ask you certain questions. So during your first meeting, uh, you could ask things like, how frequently would you like for us to like update each other and what formats do you think would be most useful? So um, what, what kind of questions would you ask your team members then? Anyone? Yes, Jamalis. Uh, okay. So maybe for uh, for the initial uh, project uh, meeting, I, I would uh, ask my team members mm -hmm. uh, how uh, how much they they understand the business objective uh, because uh, every every team member should understand the business objective uh, uh, right so that we can uh, contribute uh, to to our uh, full uh, full potential so uh, that's uh, that's that uh, will be what i would uh, ask for for the initial project meeting uh, so mm -hmm. i need to uh, if if some of the team members didn't understand the business objective uh, correctly i have to clarify for them so that's the question i i have to ask uh, the first time and i hold i i want to also ask um since uh, uh, if if they understand the business objective uh, correctly i want to uh, under uh, i want to ask them uh, what they think uh, what possible solution they think to solve uh, to solve uh, this uh, business problem i don't want to just uh, tell them my solution i just want to I, ju I want to hear from them too so that we can have different uh, solution and then we can compare them and uh, you know choose the best one 
So yeah. that's that will be the yeah, that's a good way to think about curiosity. So you have to think about who you're delivering the project to, who's working on the team, if they understand the goals of the project very well, if they understand the tools they're going to use to implement that project very well. We're going to look at what does the bank expect from us. Um, so such, yes, those things are going to guide you. Uh, your curiosity and you'll be able to ask the right questions to team members and also to the stakeholders. So we are going to finish the tutorial with the statement that questions are not just about getting the answers, but they're about understanding deeper issues and also unlocking new opportunities for collaboration for effective collaboration. Um, so yeah, let's, anyone with a question before we move to the, to reviewing the challenge document? Does anyone, does everyone have access to the challenge documents and the slides? Just a thumbs up if you have access. Okay, um, so I'm just sharing you the links on the chat and then let me know if you have a problem with access, accessing the documents. But yeah, let's just go through the challenge document briefly and then we end our session there. So this week's um, topic is all about developing curiosity and the ability to ask good questions in our place specifically. So we just have a small introduction on why. So go through, go, read through the introduction bit of it, and then um, understand why it's important to ask the right questions in a professional setting, and also how it improves or enhances your skills. And yeah, the right question is not about finding the direct answer, but it's about exploring the different possibilities that could be. So we have also, yeah, so asking good questions is fueled by the ability to be naturally curious. And I have also linked the, um, the post on why curious people are destined for C-suite. And it explains how the different or the biggest uh, leaders in our industry always have, or bet their, they bet most of their candidates on curiosity. Like if you're curious enough to want to know more about what my company does and how it's going, then I'm going to bet that you are going, like I can already tell you're interested in our project. So in this challenge, you will, so yeah, go through that, um, please read through the, the document, uh, this link, and then you're given the different workplace scenarios and you are asked to formulate what kind of questions you can think about in that scenario. So just like we've done here in, uh, in the tutorial, the last three questions. So the objective is to just develop your, your ability to discern whether additional information is necessary and uh, how are you going to craft questions that are very clear and concise and can also help with decision making. So submission for this work is on Friday, same, same time. And so for this, you have, you have scenarios where you need to ask further questions to understand the situations better. Some, uh, scenarios where you may be curious to know more, even though there's no need for an action to be taken. And then there's a scenario where information may be given, um, yeah, but you don't need to ask any further question. So the, the task is to determine whether each scenario, you need to ask further questions. And if you decide that further questions or curiosity questions are needed, you write down those five specific questions that you think you need to ask to better understand the project and yeah the task 
So you have scenario one, two, three, up to 10. We're not going to go through it. Uh, but yeah, go through the, each and every scenario. And if it doesn't, if it's, if it's very ambiguous, um, what kind of questions would you draft? And make sure when you're drafting your questions, they're very clear and concise um, and that someone understands. So yeah, you'll be required to just write those in uh, Google Slides and then uh, yeah, submit it on 10X. And the deadline is on Friday. So any questions so far? Okay, it's great that you have access. Can we share the link? Okay. So here's a link to the slides. And then here is a link to the document. Um, but I'm also going to share the drive in Slack. Uh, but yeah, I hope we all like develop that ability to be naturally curious between that muscle in our brain and also try and see if we can ask good questions. So I would love for us after this exercise that we get to ask more questions either during stand up or during the challenge introduction, when you're having a challenge introduction for your technical challenges, I'd love to see more of you asking more questions about the things that don't, that even if it seems like a very stupid question, just ask it for your own understanding. Uh, yeah, so I hope you guys have an amazing evening ahead and I wish you all the best with your submissions. Um, yeah, have a great day, everyone. Thank you for attending the session.